in protests sparked by police brutality against African Americans as families of all colors thinking about how they talk to their kids about race. And this conversation can be difficult, especially when parents don't fully understand or fully feel comfortable discussing racism and discrimination. And Denver 7's Russell Haythorn is taking a 360 dive into this issue. And while there is no one size fits all approach, most agree it is time for each family to have a conversation. Yeah, I have like We want them to remain open-minded and hear other people. <laughs> In the home of Jerome and Sarah Hilliard. We have a basketball tournament for both of them this weekend. The conversation around the kitchen table is what you might expect with two young daughters. Trying to coordinate rides. Sometimes Kiana's having like seven practices a week. But these days, there's also a heavier topic. She has experienced some stuff at school. Like many mixed race families and families of color, the Hilliards are not immune to lingering, vile, and often deep-seated racism. We walked into, you want an apple? A brewery yeah. in a small town, not this town. Two men were up at the counter and one of them said something about Oh, it must be fried chicken night or something. I didn't hear it, but Jerome and Sabella's friend heard it. She was just confused and disgusted. Their story is all too familiar. The reason why this movement is happening, you have to change your, your mind, your thinking, and, and uh, be educated and not judge people by the color of their skin, but by the character. We don't like to talk about our ugly, ugly history. Yet Dr. Rosemary Allen says that's exactly what we should be doing. I never was a slave, but the impact of slavery is in my DNA. My race dictates where I get to live, what schools I go to, my level of education, what diseases I'll get. That, Rosemary says, defines systemic racism. It's in us. The country hasn't changed its view of us. Structures and procedures that unfairly disadvantage people of color, like low-income neighborhoods lacking the tax revenues and school funding of more affluent neighborhoods. When are we going to talk about the inequities there? And it goes beyond that to include daily activities. She recently bought a new vacuum at Best Buy. The cashier emailed her a receipt, but she told him she couldn't leave without a paper receipt. When you go shopping, do not ever leave the store without a receipt or a bag. She says all of us can start by having a conversation in our own families and being honest with ourselves. I don't see color, I just see people. I'm colorblind. That's the biggest fallacy in the world. Instead, Rosemary says recognize and acknowledge differences because children understand more than we give them credit for. Children notice race in infancy. I was at the supermarket, a kid rounded the corner and went, hey, you're black. I said, I am, and you're white with blue eyes. Notice differences, honor it. You're born with that sort of mentality that, you know, because a lot of kids are born into gang families, mom and dad. Racism is as American as apple pie and baseball. Chris Nelson grew up in South Central LA, and despite the upper middle class neighborhood he lives in today. When people see me, they'll say, oh, well, this guy doesn't have any perspective. Oh, I have a lot of perspective. Yeah, no justice! No. I vividly remember the Rodney King beating and the subsequent riots and looting. I vividly remember my father spray painting black owned on his business only to watch it burn down. I watched that city burn and no changes being made. He, like so many others, believes this time is different. This is a moment I've never seen before. If you don't have those conversations right after all that stuff happens, then you really don't move the needle. You work at a bank and you know that you say that you give loans to minorities, but privately you really, really don't. See something, say something. The way you get to the bottom of this is you're going to have to Talk to people that don't look like you. You're going to have to talk to people that don't live in the same neighborhood as you. Chris and his wife are raising two children in Stapleton, a neighborhood recently at the center of the race debate. To be completely honest with you, I don't want to change the name because what ends up happening is uh, you scrub a part of history that we, we should learn from. He says changing neighborhood names and pulling down statues is a slippery slope of real pain mixed with phony activism. We want to learn and grow. The news cycles move so fast in this country. Mm -hmm. If we don't take advantage of this moment right now, we might lose it and might not get, ever get it back. What's different this time might just be the sequence of coronavirus, the subsequent lockdown, and then the death of George Floyd. For many people, they're home alone. They see this injustice and then they have to grapple with it. 
you can't run out to the movie theater. Rosemary says swift legal action against police brutality recently has proven racial justice doesn't take as long as we thought. When officers went rogue, they were fired immediately. Experts and families agree seizing the moment could finally address generations of pain. Social pressure is going to make those folks come around. I think it's like good that people are finally speaking like out about it. Everybody has to understand this stuff really happens. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. We know there are a lot of parents out there starting these conversations with their children or looking for advice on how to do it. We want to hear from all of you. Please reach out to us, 360 at the DenverChannel.com's email address or join the conversation on the Denver 7 Facebook and Twitter pages.